All right, so without getting into a sales pitch too much, uh, why would why would you want to use Rust? Um, safety is always the number one item that comes up with Rust. Um, you have memory safety absolutely built in, um, no buffer flows, no use after free, uh, none of the common vulnerabilities that have uh, plagued so many projects over the years. And you get this with um, you get this by default. So you know, C++ these days has all of these safety features, but you have to opt into them. Rust has them all by default, but you can opt out of some of them if you find yourself in a space where you're having performance problems. Um, if you're coming from a managed language like Go or Java, then you've got a lot of this safety. Um, you have less in the way of um, automatic data risk protection, which is Rust's other huge selling point, because uh, Rust will scan your code for you, find all the cases that you're not properly synchronizing, and it is unbelievably thorough in doing so. Um, I've even had it catch things like um, data going across a thread boundary coming back, but your code that's assuming that it is still there might, might be unaware that um, it's now running on a different thread. Um, it's extremely hard to make a data race in Rust. And so uh, this has been a problem for a lot of companies that have introduced highly parallel systems. And Rust can help you out. So the second reason to go with Rust is speed. It compiles to native code, um, uses the LLVM compiler chain from uh, originally from Apple, but now open source. Uh, the um, optimization levels it applies are really quite extreme. It's a um, very, very fast language by default. And one of the things you'll be seeing in this presentation is that I haven't got into deep optimizations. I haven't manually managed memory, haven't manually managed mar uh, marshaled threads. And because I'm, I'm sticking to keep it simple, and even so, it's extremely high performance. Um, on techempower.com, uh, benchmarks for web servers with normal practical workloads, uh, five of the top 10 web servers are written in Rust. And I'd say um, four out of five of those are really quite easy to use. Um, I personally have been using Axum and Rocket lately. Um, those uh, map pretty well with the, as you'll see in a minute, it, those map pretty well with common development patterns. And even though they're not the fastest in the world, they are still extremely fast. If you're interested in latency, uh, Rust um, doesn't have a garbage collector. Uh, so it is only allocating when you tell it to allocate. Um, and if, if you need, however, to have reference counting, that's built in too. Um, one of the keys for I found from using Rust for high performance computing is that it's extremely predictable. Uh, when you look at um, the JVM in particular, you'll see 90% of the time your latency is great. And every now and again, in the last few percent, you get these horrible spikes. And those are hard to get rid of. Uh, so Rust is fantastic for uh, safety critical things where a bit of latency might actually cause you a problem. I was recently named a safe language by NAST, um, meaning that it is considered safe enough to write something that might control the braking system in your car. And that is huge. And it does that largely by default. As long as you avoid doing anything fantastically bad, you get very predictable latency by default. Um, Brian Eschinger says a friend, a friend of his um, was doing working with Linux kernel mod modules and ported several written in C to Rust and saw a performance increase. And I can attest to that. In LibreQOS, uh, the um, we actually ported quite a bit of Linux code that talks to the kernel uh, directly over to Rust, and performance has just been amazing. Uh, we're handling upwards of 25 gigs of traffic shaping in software now. And the last benefit I'd like to just mention is that Rust does give you a huge amount of control. Uh, so you can opt into controlling memory allocation, threads, stack size, and buffers if you need it. And if you don't need it, then it defaults to uh, sensible settings. So this is all there when you want it. So you build your program. If you find that something isn't keeping up, you've got the um, tools and knobs you need to change it. But most of the time, you won't ever have to touch this stuff. And you can treat Rust like any other programming language. And because Rust is a pretty friendly language, um, you might even enjoy doing it.
Um, which brings you to uh, Stack Overflow keeps voting it the most loved language um, from um, I came to it from C++, and I can honestly say that I loved the transition, um, but C++ is sometimes a gnarly language. Uh, one of the things I personally like is that Rust is really expressive. You can do a lot with very little code, and sometimes uh, it leads to really beautiful, easy-to-read code. And I, I like that. I like code that when I forget about a project and come back in six months, I can look at what I did and see how it works. But I also like to not have to write hundreds of pages of boilerplate. Um, Rust does have a large ecosystem. That's a blessing and a curse. There's an awful lot of uh, crates out there on crates.io. The hard part is figuring out what the good ones are. I'm hoping I can help you a bit with that today and in the classes I'm teaching. So overall, Rust is very productive, and you can see productivity gains for adopting it into your enterprise. For the full course, visit courses dot art and labs dot com.